Hello my tarot friends, Justin Michael, welcome back to my channel, and welcome of course if it's your first time visiting, I appreciate you as always. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well, I wanted to hop on today and talk a little bit about uh, Patrick Valenza's uh, historic tarot deck collection. So most of you will know who Patrick Valenza is, he is the creator and designer of the tremendously popular Deviant Moon tarot deck, uh, which is currently being printed through US Games, uh, but he prints a slew of other decks independently through his own little company called Deviant Moon Inc., uh, which uh, I'm going to link all the information down below in case you're interested in any of this stuff. Um, and he also prints a deck called Triumphi della Luna, which is also very popular. Uh, and I don't own that deck. I do have the Deviant Moon, but it's never really been my cup of tea. I find this art style to be very uh, interesting. Uh, it's just not really my thing. But being really interested in historic decks, I've noticed, and kind of low-key, he's offering these at the bottom of his his website, uh, you know, if you visit his store, it'll say, you know, like the resurrected tarot or whatever. Um, so what he's doing is he's acquiring a collection. I noticed this um, because he was um, posting pictures of these original historic tarot decks, which were really impressive on like the Tarot de Marseille Facebook group and so forth. And I believe it was the Joseph Henri Rokius that I saw first. Uh, and I was like, well, okay, he's just amassing like a huge collection of historic tarots. So what he's doing is he's he's getting the actual deck and he's scanning them and printing them himself, uh, which is actually really convenient for him, especially because, you know, what people generally have to do to print facsimiles is go through the museum a lot of times. And then you have to pay all these uh, fees, uh, you know, printing fees and so forth, licensing fees. Uh, and that can get really annoying uh, because these decks have some of them are hundreds of years old they're well into the public domain um but the museums manage to kind of secure uh the i guess the 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 photographs themselves uh, that's the only way i could think it, it works but regardless it's nice that he's able to get the actual deck he's been doing this a while i did i did know he had a kirchner um and a gaspin which weren't really calling to me uh at the time um but starting with the joseph uh, omri rokis i started following his his project along and then i got uh the uh epinol was probably the most recent and then um the eduardo Dodi. so these are decks that i really wanted uh i wouldn't have them in my collection if not for uh, Patrick uh, acquiring these. And so I wanted to give him a little shout out, show you what he has to offer and you know, link his information below if you're interested in getting in any, any of this. Of course, just check out the uh, info section. Um, so what I wanna show you first is the Epinol. Um, so the Epinol is, um, it's, there was a modern printing, I think like 1976, the company, um, well, I read in Kaplan's book, uh, it was Arts and Letters in France was the name of the organization. I always thought Grimaud printed it, but I, I'm probably wrong about that. But 1976, so Arts and Letters did a reprint of this, and it's still available. Like You still see it. A lot of times you'll see the deck um, with the English and French titles, which I didn't really like. I wanted all French, uh, which is kind of harder to come by. However, this is, blows... All that out of the water it, it makes it totally unnecessary for me to get because this is the real deal from the middle of the 19th century this is um so let me give you a little background of, of uh the the pellerin deck here or the, the epinol um so pellerin and cie so pellerin printing house uh was a 19th century printer in epinol france epinol is located you know just above besson uh on the eastern um strip of of france where uh, printing these tarot decks was very common, almost near Switzerland even. Um, and, you know, that's where tarot was generally printed on the eastern side. There aren't very many places west in the 18th and 19th century, especially. It all was uh, kind of confined to the eastern side. The engraver is Francois Georgen, and the printing house was, was Pellerin. So Georgen, uh, according to the um, British Museum, started... Uh, working as an engraver for Pellerin uh, from like the age of 12 or 13 until about 1860 when he uh, left there went for another company and then died shortly after I think in like 1863 he died so this is roughly printed in 1860 but it could have been as early as 1830 um, because he spent his life working for um, 
uh, Pellerin. So we just really don't know the exact date, but we know that this is an original deck uh, from the middle of the 19th century, basically. Uh, and so Patrick has scanned it and printed it for us, and it's really beautiful. It's as nice of a facsimile as you're going to get. The quality of these decks uh, is pretty decent. I mean, they're inexpensive decks, so I'm not going to complain about the paper quality. Uh, standard tuck box with a lot of information on here. Um, and uh, the card quality is like a little on the thin side and it's like kind of museum like paper quality, but it's all right. I wish that he would do like a playing card paper. Um, but you know, I like that they're square cut and they are kind of cool. They're like collector decks, but I would like to read with this and I have a feeling it might get beat up, um, you know, pretty easily. Um, but this is a really cool deck. It really is. It's so different than anything. It's in the Besson Song style. So first, let me let me just read his little uh, bit of information on this, just to give you a little background. So, uh, the Epinal Tarot was originally printed in France between 1830 and 1870 by Pellerin and CIE. The woodcut engravings were artistically crafted by Francois Georgen in the Tarot de Besançon fashion. So I'll explain to you what Besançon is, most of you are going to know, but it, it just replaces the Pope and Pope S uh, with Juno and Jupiter. <clears throat> and it was it's named after Besançon, the town uh, in France, which is close by Epinal. Um, but the, the earliest Besançon type that we have is not from there. Uh, we, we've discovered earlier, um, and it just... They came up with the best and song title and it kind of stuck. It's, it's it's a bit of a misnomer, which is a common thing. Even Tara de Marseille is, is a bit of a misnomer, but uh, we see that often. Um, so Stuart Kaplan um, dated this deck between 1870 and 75. I think 1860s is more uh, close. Um, but he calls this a catch penny deck, uh, Kaplan, in his encyclopedia. He says that these packs were inexpensively printed for popular distribution. Um, so, you know, that's the, the term catch pennies. It's like, was not a, um, a luxury pack. This is like, you know, inexpensive pack of cards that were used for games and so forth. Backs, which I assume are the original backs, kind of remind me of like the one JJ Swiss and all those types of decks, which is, you know, I didn't realize that these kind of backs went back to uh, the middle of the 19th century. You know, they look, 20th century even to me but it's pretty cool i'm pretty sure that's the original back i would have to add if anybody knows that would be great um it reminds me a bit of the jj swiss so i'm going to pull out the jj swiss i have here um one of the early versions from the 70s um and this was printed by uh ag muller in 1970 i think in u.s games which is the same year they printed the rider pack um but i figured I'll just pull this out just to have something to talk about and compare it to. Not exactly the same, but it kind of reminded me of, first off, the colors are similar. Um, you know, sim very similar colors, but also because they're both best in songs, um, it reminds me of that. And, and I think, I'm not sure if the JJ Swiss is best based on a historic deck or not. Uh, if anybody knows that, please comment below. I couldn't find any information about it, and Kaplan just names the JJ Swiss as being printed in 1970 by A.G. Muller and U.S. Games. It doesn't say it's based on an original deck or something. I think it's an original type based on, like, this catchpenny um, tarot look, you know, like the Pellerin. Um, but I got to tell you, for being, like, an inexpensive deck, like, the engravings look phenomenal, I think. Um, you can tell that uh, Francois Georgian was a very skilled engraver, um, and it almost... it. Like, the details in this deck are really impressive to me. You know, and I'm not, like, an expert in woodcut engravings, but, you know, you look at so many of these decks and you kind of um, get to know the good ones from the, from the not-so-good ones. And this one actually looks really good. So, um, but also it's a very different kind of deck, too. Uh, it has, like, a little Halloween vibe for me right now because of the, the full has, like, you know, like, kind of a witchy hat or, um, you know, almost like a scarecrow type type look um you know you might you might have fun with, with that a little bit especially this time of year but I, I just figured they both would be cool to look at and then of course you have the name peller in here with france and i think it's just on the first couple of cards les faux which is like the madman basically and the lay mat which is roughly the same thing um 
just different different uh, way of saying it uh, and they're completely different I mean like, but the JJ Swiss fool has always been different not really this fits more in with the Tower de Marseille as you can see yourself um, but there are some similarities that you're gonna see um, what I found interesting about the magician uh, or Le Batelier is the escamoter um, is the the phrase used here which means like conjurer I think I've never seen that in a tarot deck before but otherwise I mean you have a similar kind of table um, you know looks the, they have a lot in common same kind of um, posture almost but it looks to be kind of similar to me you know um, but he has like the La Plume hat and but again like a lot of details a lot of shadows and sh like it just it's hard to believe that this is a wood a woodcut engraving to me you know it looks almost more like copper plated um, but very very well done and very pretty um, so now we have no Papess, we, we have Juno, which is, a, you know, the Roman goddess. She's the queen of heaven, basically, queen of all the gods. Um, and, and that's kind of the point, I think, is, like, you have the queen of heaven with Juno. She's known for the, the peacock and, and so forth. And then you have the queen of earth, the earthly queen, which is um, the empress. What a beautiful empress card. I mean, I love the table. I love just the detail in this. It's really... Uh, just so impressive it's, it's really uh, well done I, I love the look of it and it's colored really well too you know I'd really like to know the process here like I would imagine it's stencil colored well you could tell it's stencil colored but I mean like the fact that these were printed for the masses I don't know if it was like a, some sort of other printing technology or not because now you're you're getting close to like 1860s it's getting close to the industrial uh, era but not quite there but anyway, um, and now the emperor, same thing. He's a very attractive emperor. I mean, he's more in like a Caesar kind of style. You know, you have like the sandals and the straps. Um, and you have that uh, imperial eagle, you know, which is affiliated with the, the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, but it, he looks more like, you know, from the era of like Julius Caesar or something. So yeah, it's just different. It's different than anything I have. And now we have Jupiter, which proposes re re replaces the Pope. And so that's what I get with that is like, you know, you have the earthly, um, the earthly king and then the heavenly king. And the, he has a crown too. So, you know, you have that contrast between like the fool and the magician, uh, the papess and the, and the uh, empress, you know, heavenly and earthly. Uh, queen and then the earthly and heavenly king which kind of makes sense to me um, in that way um, beautiful lover's card again like the colors the details are very small um, you know what I mean and like the, the details all the shadow type engraving lines are just it looks phenomenal it really does and you can see the influence on this too I don't know if they have a common ancestor or what um, I don't know a lot about the JJ Swiss but, um, you know, other than that, it's based in, like, Swiss tarot tradition, you know. And a similar kind of chariot to some extent. I mean, this one's a bit different, um, obviously, but, you know, they have the sim similar type crown and similar posture. But this one's more classic tarot de Marseille, you know, you have, like, the, uh, the face, shoulder pads and all. But look at, the, look at that horse. I mean, that's really impressive for, for wood blocks it's it's so impressive to me um it's really well done um and now we have justice lady justice sitting and um you know she's holding the scales like she would Sh uh, sword rested on her shoulder which in indicates to me like you know um it's there in case she needs it but she she doesn't hope to use it uh and then this little tablet here which says laws which are kind of reminiscent of like the ten commandments almost l-o-i-s translates to laws uh in french so uh typical type of hermit but you have le uh, capuchin which is like a you know friar franciscan uh, monk uh and then you have the hermit here but standard type just very attractive uh figures though i mean it's really a cool deck um traditional type wheel you know um and very tower to marseille type uh 
uh, La Force, whereas the J.J. Swiss kind of goes back to like the male figure, the Samson type figure on um, the strength card, which is uh, interesting. Okay, and Le Pendu. Oh, very, very cool. Oh, very unique. Doesn't it's it's a very unique deck. Okay, we have death and temperate. So you know, looking pretty terror to Marseille. The devil's very Swiss. It's a very Swiss-looking devil with the hairy um, legs. You know, uh, and those kind of Swiss uh, wings. You know. you know, very cool. And Le Maison Du at the tower. Beautiful star card. I love that. I love all the, like the the shadow lines, and it's just it's a very pretty, pleasantly colored deck. Um, I love the greens and the yellows. The colors are just really nice in here, and it reminds me of this deck a lot. In a, in a lot of ways, I see a lot of similarities. And then we have uh, that Besson Song, Full Face of the Moon, which you see, which which uh, is very similar to what you see in Type 1 Tower to Marseille, you know, with the Full Face of the Moon, and goes back, presumably the early, earlier style of moon, and you see that in also the Lombard Tarot, too. Um, you know, like the Milanese later tradition as well, so. But also unique in its own way, but I just can't get over how well it's colored. I, I really like this deck a lot. And then we have the sun and judgment. Beautiful world card. I love this world card. It's really pretty and just so much detail for a woodcut. It's anyway. That's all I'm going to show you in terms of um, you know this is very Swiss looking, um, very tired of Marseille type pips, but. Um, you know, a little different, a little more modern, and, and so forth. Um, but I'm not going to go through all of them. The one JJ Swiss, I just pulled out the trumps to show you how similar they are. But let me show you the pips uh, in the uh, Epinal. So you have here Fabrique, Day, Pellerin. So Pellerin and Company Print House in Epinal, you know, as you would see on the Two of Cups. Very, very beautiful pips. Uh, Tower to Marseille, but unique too. You know, they have like this unique kind of look to them. Very, you know, 19th century kind of look. And more Tower to Marseille than what you would see in the Swiss decks. But uh, I'm a big fan of this deck. I really like it. I like all the little details. And Very, very cool. Nice court cards, too. Two of Coins doesn't have any information on there, but, uh, you know, love it. I love this deck. So, yeah, I mean, and this is still available through uh, Patrick Valenza. And then you can also get the reprint that was done in the 70s, um, which I'm no longer looking for because I have this. This kind of scratches that itch. Um, the reprint is not as good as a scan facsimile of um, the original 19th century deck, which is what I'd be interested in. Uh, the next deck I want to show you is the, um, the Joseph Henri uh, Rokius. Uh, so the Rokius card makers, were, they were a French family. And I had a conversation with Yves Renaud about this uh, a while back, but he, he's the one who told me. They were a French, originally from France, the family. They relocated to Neuchâtel, I believe. I'll show you the spelling. Um, Neuchâtel, uh, Switzerland. So the, and they kind of uh, adopted that Neuchâtel um, like canon of card making. This is the one, of course, by Patrick Lenza. This is the one we're talking about. I'm pulling out, and it was printed in 1816, but I'm pulling out the Claude Rokius, uh, which is presumably his grandfather, uh, an earlier uh, ancestor. In fact, I'm gonna put this one on the left. But it's a very big uh, deck, and uh, I do like this deck a lot, although uh, the engravings are kind of um, a little cheesy. Like, I can see why they didn't use the same uh, wood blocks, you know, because they're just, 
they're a little sloppy, um, but pretty cool. Let me just read to you what Eve has here. The Rokius are a lineage of card of master card makers native of Avaron uh, in France who became established in the canton of Neuchatel in Switzerland. Francois Rokius said the elder son comes from Thiers in France and becomes established in Switzerland in Beauvais in 1752 in the canton of Neuchatel. His younger brother Claude Rokius, um, which is what this deck is, accompanies him and settles down uh, St. Sulpice is a small neighboring village in the canton of Vaud. In 1754, Claude buys for 2,625 deniers the workshop of his brother. He will set it up in 1760 and prints the present deck. These cards respect the traditional canon but distinguish themselves by the inversion of the orientation in mirror of a large number of them. Okay. Um, yeah, so they're originally from. Um, you know, uh, theaters in France, and then they move to uh, Neuchatel uh, area. Um, this is much later, you know, uh, a full generation later, really. There is a deck um, by a Jacques Rokius, which is in the same kind of um, tradition, which I'm very interested in. And this is why this is a good example of what I get from having these decks. Um, just doing these kind of walkthroughs and and looking, you know. Uh, on video and kind of just sharing thoughts and, and learning as I go. Um, but I can also understand that there was a tradition of card making that existed uh, at least within one family, uh, if not in the, the city or the area of, of Neuchatel in Switzerland. Uh, because you can really see the similarities here. It's like the same exact can. And, and it, um, so pay special attention to the labels you know, where you have almost the same type of labels. And you have even the same kind of facial expressions, uh, postures, and little details and so forth. Some have changed, obviously, uh, from 1754 to 1816. Is, it's a long period of time, um, but it's still kind of a similar um, tradition. These are the backs, which you see in the Karaja. It was a very popular card back in the uh, 19th century, so um, I, I use that uh, design myself. But uh, you can see, very, very similar. The coins, just everything on the table, uh, the labels, everything is very, very similar um, design, you know? So you can, it kind of tells a story about the, the family of card makers and how they were loyal to um, the, the canon of, of the predecessors. But what, what I can see here is that the, the deck that Pratt, the later deck printed by Patrick, uh, is done much better in terms of the engraving. You know, you can see they did a much a much nicer job. It's much cleaner. And now, albeit this is a, a facsimile done by Eve, but you know, you can see just the lines um, are just not very clean. Um, it, it's it's not as well engraved. So, but uh, very very obviously related. Now. Um, the Jacques Rokus is a deck that I'm really excited to get because it's one deck that I hope that him and, and um, his partner do, you know, uh, Wilfred. Because, um, again, I mean, it's, it's an important kind of family uh, in terms of Tarot de Marseille. I mean, you can see, like, the mustache and just all the little details are very, very similar, not to mention identical titles. Okay, yeah, this is part. I mean, look, look at the the rustic quality of the lovers versus this one, you know, it's much cleaner. You know. Very similar chariot, same type of nameplate, and, um, you know, you can see very, very related. Justice. You know, even like the, the almost to a T, even the period after and so forth. And then we have the Hermit. Slightly different Hermit. I believe this was a Protestant area in Neuchatel, if I'm not mistaken, um, historically, because it, you don't have, um, they're not uh, changing um, the Pope and Pope S. I, I could be wrong about that, but uh, it's just a, a guess, but I, I think it is. Generally, from what I understand, 
in the Catholic areas is where they replaced the Pope and Pope S. And then in the Protestant areas, they didn't really bother. But then ultimately, it, the, the Besson song kind of caught on with the Protestants as well. Um, I love this hangman. I like the pointy shoes. It's very cute. Um, and the colors are very pleasant. Kind of remind me of the Gasman, the colors. You know, like, like that cool green. You can see they both have the word Lamort on the death card. Okay, yeah, the Jacques Rocus is the one I was interested in um, because it has like a snake as the as the um, Devil's Wand, which uh, this one does not have. But you know, so it'd be cool to do like a comparison with all three, which hopefully one day I get to do. Um, beautiful star card. Very cool. Judgment and the world. And then here's the fool. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm not going to show you all the pips, obviously, with this one. I'm just going to briefly show you a very Terra de Marseille, though. And these are also very large cards. Uh, it's fun deck to read with. Sometimes I like a slightly larger Tower de Marseille, uh, and you know, potentially could read with this, and it would be fun. But you know, I like. Oh, there's that Florida lease, which is uh, very Tower de Marseille. Very cool. So that's the um, the Claude Rocius from 1754, and then this is the Jacques Rocius, which is available through Patrick Valenza. And also very Tara de Marseille. You know, really, really pretty deck. Uh, Joseph Henri, Rokius, Nochetel. And the, and the other one has that similar look as well. Florida Lease on the Four of Coin. Very, very cool. Okay, so that is the Rokius. Um, deck now I want to show you last but not least and this is uh, something I just showed uh, in my last video so I'm only going to briefly show you this but the Eduardo Doty this is the um, it's a Milanese deck Tara de Marseille inspired more than likely um, you know these are the backs these are Italian style cards um, and again they're a scan so you know you have um, the Italian uh, folded over edges, which you can actually see on the facsimile, which I absolutely love. You can see even those like details. Really well done um, scan, but again, if you want to see a full walkthrough of this, I did it uh, in my last video, and you can check it out. But, um, you know, just a really cool, and the very tiny, as the Lombard Tara was very tiny, you know, much smaller. Um, so, yeah, Eduardo Doty Milan, and this one is also um, available. I don't know how many he printed of, of these, but, uh, yeah, check it out. Check out his, um, his shop. It's been great for me. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, everybody, love and peace. Bye-bye.